would you describe Chandler Cox as, as a blocker? I think, you know, the one thing that we've seen from Chandler so far this fall is that he's a, he's aggressive attacking. He hasn't turned anything down yet, you know. Um, you know, there's big guys. I think there's always a, an adjustment coming to this level, particularly with the things he did at Auburn. We're asking him to do some different things from the fullback spot than he did at Auburn. And, uh, but he's embracing that. He's working at it. He's getting better at it all the time. And the one thing that, you know, you know if they don't bite when they're pups, they're not going to bite is kind of, and he's, he'll at least go and attack guys and be physical. And that's a, that's a bonus for him and for us. It's almost like he's like seeking guys, extra guys. To to that to that is kind of the job description there. If you're not one of those guys that's seeking out contact and looking for it, you're probably, you know, that's, that's probably not going to work out. <laughs> Eric, I know obviously you're, you know, in the room. Your position clearly is discussed, and it, it, this I know goes to Chris's level and Brian's ultimately. But can you give us any insight as to why there were five backs plus Chandler kept six? That's a lot at this position. Yeah, I, you know, again, I think you you. The preface to it is correct in that it's upstairs, but we felt like these guys are the kind of young players and players that we want on our team and our organization. They did a great job in the things we asked them to do in the fall. And the reality is you need guys. You know, the, there's, you know, there's very few teams that just have one back anymore. So you're going to need more than one of them at some point in time, sometimes two and three. And, you know, last year we went through, we used a bunch of guys, you know, between Brandon Bolden and Frank and Kalen and, and Kenyon. I mean, there's four of them right there. And we could have easily used some North Perry too last year. So, I mean, I think you have to have those guys in your system that know how to operate, what to do, what the expectations are. And, and we have a lot of those guys here. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's a bonus for us. I'm not asking you to reveal too much, but just one general thing. Was there a sense, you think, among you, Chris, and Brian, et cetera, that if Gaskin or Laird were released because of what they showed preseason and college tape that they could be picked up elsewhere? I, I like to think they would because I thought they did I thought they did a really nice job this this you know preseason. So I, I like to think that they would have had an opportunity somewhere else and um, you know, I coach them as hard as I can for us, but I always hope ultimately that if it's not us, then they get an opportunity somewhere else and that they're prepared to do that. So I, I like optimistically to think that they would have had a chance to do something somewhere else. What did Laird show you? I think what Patrick did was, you know, consistency, and I think he ran the ball tougher than I probably thought he was going to coming out of college. Uh, he's, he's incredibly intelligent. He works hard at this. He's, um, he's picked up our system. He, as all of them have, he and Miles really have been kind of a tag team with each other, teaching and learning each, from each other. So um, I just I just think he made the most of his opportunities and he really showed up and did some really nice things. Do you expect playing time with Kalen and Kenyon to be comparable? I don't know how that's going to go yet. I really don't. I don't have a, a definitive answer for you. I think what we've got to do is we've got to put those guys out and, and, and put them in positions to be successful and then, you know, figure out what is best for us and what's going to give us the best chance to win and compete every week. I don't, I don't know what that's going to be. I don't know how that plays out yet. And I think when you do that, I think you pigeonhole yourself into making a commitment to that. Sometimes you have to be flexible and have the ability to say, hey, we got to adapt and adjust and how are we going to do it? I think that's what's best for us. So we're going to, we're going to use both of them in, in whatever ways we possibly can because they're both dynamic players. Do you know in your mind who's starting? I know you would share it. Do you know and you can't say, or you or I have I, I have I have no idea because we haven't you know we're still putting a game plan together and I don't know how all that goes yet I really don't I haven't I haven't got that in my mind and we haven't even talked about it it's not even a conversation we've had. I'm just going to ask you real quick in closing. Mark Wall uh, seemed to run the ball hard in the fourth preseason game. Had you been concerned about the low per carry average? Before then, in terms of him not finding holes, or had you felt he'd always been running or doing what you needed? I I. I I try to make sure that I judge guys from when I get them to what I see now. What they did before then is what they well, I did in the first three. Pre oh, in the first preseason, you you don't know. I I don't because I oh, I see what you're saying there. I, I think I think Mark ran the ball hard in practice. I think he ran the ball tough in the right spots throughout the preseason. So no, I don't I don't I don't have any concerns about him carrying the football at all.